sat down with the CEO and chairman of Marathon Petroleum, Gary Hammiger. Here's his take on where things stand. If you look at, uh, first of all, on the oil side, then I'll get into gasoline and, and diesel. Good. But on the oil side, we're expecting in 2018 global demand to be up about a million, one and a half million barrels per day. And if you look at inventories on uh, across the globe for crude, we're in the best shape. And I would expect by mid-year we'll be in balance across the globe on the crude oil side. On the gasoline, inventories are the lowest that they've been since 2006. Wow, I didn't realize So if I go back to 2015, 2016, as we came out of the third quarter, the driving season, uh, inventories really swelled in those two years. This year we're entering 2018 with the lowest gasoline inventories we've since 2006 and diesel is the lowest inventory since 2013 and we're seeing a big boost in diesel demand across the country. Let's talk about diesel because you say diesel is a really important indicator in terms of what's happening broadly in the economy. It is Maria. We've uh, for many years I've said that is diesel demand is a great predictor. It's the it's the fuel that's used for construction. It's the fuel that's used for transporting goods and services to the marketplace and uh, across America we're seeing uh, good diesel demand, and across the globe. If you look at the exports coming out of the U.S. refining system, the exports into Europe, South America, Latin America, uh, diesel is very strong, and gasoline is picking up significantly as well. Well, l this leads me to a question about the policies coming out of this administration, in particular an infrastructure package that we're waiting on. Right, but we need new pipelines, additional pipelines. We need tremendous investment in the locks and dams, that control the Ohio River system, the Mississippi River system, to be able to move uh, crude oil refined products to the Gulf Coast and to uh, markets up and down the Ohio River system. And I believe that infrastructure, you know, he just talked about in the State of the Union address, um, it, I think it's imperative that this infrastructure bill gets passed here early in 2018. Well, it's important to mention what that means because that's a big job creator. When you're talking about we need new pipelines, we're going to see more activity in the oil, gas, and diesel sector. That's high paying jobs as well. You're right, high paying jobs. And, uh, you know, in order to be able to build these pipelines, the, the river system that I was discussing, it's going to take many years to accomplish this. So these are high paying jobs. And I think they'll be there for a long time. Tell me what you've done with the MLP, dropping a billion dollars. What's the latest there? Uh, we completed our strategic plan that we've been working on for the last 15 months. Uh, we completed the uh, drop of a billion dollars into MPLX, so that is all complete. So this was a big part of our strategic plan over the last year. So our midstream segment is, is complete. We are also indicating uh, the, or forecasting that we're going to have a 10% growth, which is one of the highest growth rates in MLPs in the business, but we're expecting a in 2018 at 10% growth. I was surprised to see the oil market and uh, look, I'm, I want to focus on oil, but then I want to get your take on gasoline as well, but, but the oil market to be where it is. I mean, oil rallied right back up um, and you've got expectations that this continues. Well, I think that we're eventually going to see oil get into the $70, probably not over 75, but I would expect it to get into $70 and plateau for, for some time. Um, I think the, the caveat there has to be how cautious is the producer in the Permian, um, in the in the southwest part of the U.S.? Because those are the barrels that are also looking to be exported. But the the global supply came in check uh, very quickly in 2017. As we move out into uh, to 2018 here, I think inventory is going to continue to be in in good balance. Expecting to see uh, growth. We were the uh, exports were over 1.5 million barrels per day uh, here early in the year. I, I understand in, uh, in late 2017 we were a little over 2 million barrels a day of exports. So, so that's very important for the, the producer to, to understand where the supply and demand balance globally is going to be. But I would, uh, I would not be surprised to see crude oil be in the $70 range before the end of the year. You're, you're giving us your update on CapEx spending. Mm -hmm. How important was the tax law that, w that we just saw pass uh, to your increases in CapEx? Well, we, we had our uh, capital budget already in place before, but we, we had assumed that there was going to be some change in the tax law that would benefit us. In fact, this big uh, transaction I just talked about with MPLX, just moving that into 2018, we were able to save 250 to $300 million of tax, which we're number. going to be able to deploy 
than in, in further capital spending. But we see some great opportunities for additional capital spending in our refining, in our midstream, but also in our retail space. Where does the growth come from, specifically at Marathon Petroleum? Let's call it for the next three years. Um, I think it's going to be, first of all, diesel. We're expecting diesel with the, the new IMO standards that are going to a place in 2020 where we have to go to ultra low sulfur diesel for all the shipping that comes in and out of the United States and in fact globally. So this new uh, IMO standard is going to require uh, incremental diesel in the marketplace. So we are making a lot of investment, what we call you know, maximizing uh, distillation capacity, We're making a lot of investment on a refining system to be able to increase diesel capacity. And that demand is going to be across the globe, not just in the U.S. And then on top of that, within our midstream, we're making a lot of investment and growth, as I stated earlier, a 10% growth in our midstream space just in 2018. It's one of the highest growth uh, uh, MLPs in the marketplace. And that's just due to the incremental production that we're seeing in the Marcellus, Utica, uh, the stack uh, region, and also on the Permian. Which is why you're announcing more investment in the business and increased CapEx, as well as buying back the stock. That's correct. Right. We, last year, we, we bought back $3.1 billion <coughs> in, uh, in stock. We uh, separated uh, and became a public, or, or separate publicly traded company in 2011. Since that time, we bought back $13 billion of stock. So we will continue doing that. 